Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code. So today let's solve diameter of binary tree. We're given the root of a binary tree and we want to return the length of the diameter of the tree, which is defined as being the longest path from a particular node. So in this case, it would basically be the longest path on the left side, which could either be this part or this part. Both of those are of length two. I'm getting that calculation because two is the number of edges on that side for the longest path. On the right side we just have one edge so that's one so the diameter through the root would be two plus one which is three but keep in mind that the longest path might not necessarily run through the root so let's look at a counter example with this tree if we try to calculate the diameter through the root on the left side we have nothing so that's a zero on the right side we have three that's the longest path you could take multiple different paths but all of them are going to be of length three so the diameter from here is three but consider the node over here. Length on the left side is two and length on the right side is two. So total is four. That's the diameter of this tree. Now, I wanna to mention to you that this problem is actually closer to a medium problem than an easy problem. Why exactly is that? Because the solution initially seems pretty obvious, right? To get the result, we can just try to calculate the diameter through every single node in the tree. How do you do that? Well, just like I did, get the longest path on the left and the longest path on the right and add them together, AKA sort of like the height on the left side and the height on the right side. Generally, we do this recursively with some kind of DFS algorithm. But the tricky part about this problem is that the return value, obviously, of this DFS is going to be the height. So what we want to return from this right subtree up to this node is, of course, the height. But that's not the result that we're ultimately trying to compute. What we're actually trying to compute is the diameter. Now, in terms of the code, there are multiple ways of handling that. The way I'll show you is sort of by using a member variable, or you can even think of it as sort of a global variable with respect to the recursive function. But the algorithm will be exactly like this. Recursively run DFS from the left subtree, we reach null. So the height of that, of course, is going to be zero. That's what we return up here. Then do the same on the right side. And then we'd continuously go down. And so here we'd reach the case with just a node. The height of that, we will say, is going to be one. That's going to be returned up to the parent. And that's basically saying that the length of this is one. Same thing for this side. We'll say the length is one. So now when we want to compute the diameter from here, we're going to maintain a global variable, which I'll call it the result or this for short. And initially, we'll set it to zero. This is what we're trying to maximize, of course. And from this node, we calculate a diameter of one plus one, which, of course, is going to be two now. That's the biggest result that we have. Now, from this node, I want to return up to my parent the height of this tree. So what do I do? Well, the height is different than the diameter, so we actually will take the max of the left subtree, the max of the right subtree, and add one to it. Well, in this case, they're the same, so we just get one and then add one to it, which is this edge. So we'll say that the height here is gonna be two. Obviously, it didn't have to be like that. Suppose there was a node over here, and then maybe the height of this right tree would have been two, and then we would have returned two plus one, which would have been three. So that's generally the core idea. We would do the same thing from here because it's kind of symmetrical to this side. So this would be one and one. And then the height of this is two. Height of this is two. Those are going to be returned up to three. Add them together. The diameter now is going to be four. It's going to be increased all the way up to four. From here, we want to take the max of left, max of right. It's two. And we want to add one to it because of this edge here. So then we say the height of this part is three. We return that up to the root. I'll make it another color, three. Root is going to do the same thing. Take left plus right, add them together. We get three. This time it's not greater than the result. So our result will stay unchanged and it will be four. Four is ultimately what we would return, but it's not gonna be returned from the recursive function. Keep that in mind. We're gonna have a separate variable that's sort of gonna be global, which does that. And since we were able to accomplish this by just visiting each node once, we will say that the time complexity is linear and the space complexity is gonna be proportional to the height of the tree, which could be log n for a balanced tree or n for a non-balanced tree. So we're gonna solve this recursively and I like to do it with nested functions. So I'm gonna have my DFS here and I'm gonna pass in a single variable cur. 
remember that this DFS is not returning the diameter, it's gonna return the height. That's the most important thing about this problem. It's not a trivial recursive problem. The base case though is gonna be pretty easy. If not Kerr, therefore we reached a null node. The height of that is of course just gonna be zero. So that's what we return. Otherwise, let's do the recursive case. Let's get the height of the left subtree. Let's call DFS on Kerr.left. Let's do the exact same thing for the right subtree, just like this. Now, remember, there's two things we wanna do. We wanna potentially update the result and we wanna return the height of the tree from Kerr. So let's start with the result. I'm going to create a variable self.result is equal to zero. This is basically making it a member variable of this class, like an instance of this class so that it is accessible inside of this nested function. So when I want to maximize the result, I'm gonna set it equal to the max of itself, self.result, and the current diameter. How do we get that? We'll just take the left and right and add them together just as we did in the drawing explanation. Now for returning, we're not returning this, we're not returning the diameter. Remember, this returns the height. How do we calculate the height though? Well, it's either gonna be the max of the left or the max of the right, and also don't forget to add one for the current node that we are at. This just tells us the max of either of the subtrees, but plus one will give us the max of the height from Kerr. Now, that's actually pretty much it. It's not easy to come up with. Remember, the complexity of this comes from the fact that the return value is not the result. So down here, we're gonna return self.result, but don't forget, don't be like me and forget to actually call the recursive function starting from the root. This is the entire solution. You can see that it works and it's very efficient. I just wanna show you a couple different ways that you could have handled this global case though, at least in Python. Another way is just making it a local variable result. And then in here to update it, let's get rid of all the self dots here. Let's get rid of that and let's get rid of that. To update result, you have to kind of declare it non-local first. You wanna say that this is not a local variable to this function. It's actually the same result that was declared out there. So this will do the same thing. So if we execute this, You'll see that once again, it works. It says it's more efficient, but leak code runtimes are random, so don't really pay attention to that. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you wanna learn a bunch of more Python tricks, check out my Python for Coding interviews course, and I hope you have a good day.